What's up guys? Welcome back to the channel, The Auto Shop Life, GRC54. So I gotta do a quick one. I usually don't do these business side videos back to back, but gotta fill you in on kind of what's been going around the shop, with kind of lack of videos, and let you know that uh, Steve quit. So check it out. Shut up and sit down. All right, guys, so jumping on to it, it's uh, super early in the morning. I got a busy day, so I just wanted to get this video pretty much filmed, edit it later, but uh, yeah, Steve's no longer employed here. Um, pretty much brings up a good topic on taking pride in your work, you know, uh, integrity as a mechanic, you know, try to be all that you can be, and pretty much tell you guys how the story went. You know, Steve was a good guy. As a person, the kid was a great, he was a great kid, and you know, the kid was learning every day. You know, it, it seemed like when he first came here, you know, he had what it take, he had what it took to be a mechanic. But, you know, I guess just it slowly slips by. You know, I try to make my text feel comfortable. Um, you know, I, I definitely took care of Steve. You know, I definitely, you know, more than just here at the shop, you know, buying him lunch every day. You know, I, I like his mom, got stuff for his mom. You know, I helped him out financially. I helped him out, you know, try to catch up, try to keep him. But, you know, I helped Steve out, you know, as a person, it, it, more than just an employee. Obviously, you know, you find a good employee, you want to take care of him. I've always been true to that. I always try to take care of my employees to the most. But, you know, I, I went the elect a little extra further for Steve because, you know, he first started out, the kid was kicking butt out there. I mean, he was getting it done, coming in, you know, but uh, I guess all good things don't last forever. And, you know, it still slowly started to slip away, whether it was, you know, problems at home he had or whatever it was, you know, um, but I definitely took care of him. You know, I, you know, definitely tried to keep him in the black, keep him out of debt, helped him out with his bills, you know, paid him a little extra here and there, um, took care of some of his, you know, financing problems that he had got stuff for his parents that they needed, you know, I, I take care of him, buy him lunch every day, whatever it takes, you know, try to keep the kid happy, keep your employees happy. Um, but, you know, I, I guess it just got to a point where, you know, he started to know me too much, too personal, you know, maybe, maybe I tried asking too much of him, I don't think I did, you know, the kid comes in here working for me, working for the shop, you know, I'm paying him to do the things that need to be done out there, whether it's on a car or whatever, but, you know, the kid started off strong, you know, came in, Steve making work an hourly, so you know I would expect in between cars or waiting on parts, you know the kid to pick up a broom, clean up the shop, clean up his mess, you know, and that slowly started to deplete, and and that's what brings up the point of this video, guys. It's you're getting paid hourly as the me mechanic. It's not just about working on cars. You know, obviously you got to come in, keep your base clean, keep the shop safe, and you know, decluttered from stuff. And the big one to me is you know, the quality of work you put out, whether your hourly, flat rate, whatever it was. And with Steve, he just started to slip up. It seemed like he stopped caring. You know, the kid, you know, needs to understand. I know, I know people don't need, people don't like to be told what to do. And, you know, me as an owner, I'm still told what to do. So no matter what, you're not really going to get away with that. You know, as opposed to being an employee, you know, you don't like being told what to do and you don't get told what to do. You know, chances are you might lose your job. You might get written up. You might get whatever. For me, as an owner, I don't get told what to do. I mean, there's chances I could go to jail. You know, it, there's you have to do. You know, everybody's going to tell you what to do in life, unless you know you're a billionaire. You know, and and you have your own. And still, still then, living in America, you're going to get told what to do. So, but uh, you know, it just slowly depleted him. Like I said, Steve as a person was great, but you know, he come in one particular story. Um, it was later in the day, about four o'clock. I sold a couple control arms on a Nissan lower control arms. And you could just tell the look in his face, like, you know, he gets out of here at 5 usually, and he, just, he acted like there wasn't enough time in the day. You know, me knowing that I'm able to get the parts, uh, I knew we had enough time to get it done, and, you know, he just gives me that attitude and that mentality, like, you know, who do you think you are making me work my last hour of being here? You know, and that's, I, I sensed it. You know, I never really brought it up to him, but I definitely sensed it in him. So we sell the job on the Nissan, pull it out, I knocked out the driver's side, why he did the passenger side. Parts came in, knocked my side out. He worked on his another 25 minutes or so. His ride ended up pulling up. It was close to 5 o'clock. <clears throat> he wrapped his up, didn't test drive it, backed the Nissan out of the shop, put it right in the parking spot and left. 
So you got to always test drive your, your cars. I mean, that's one big thing right there. Always recheck your work. Always make sure, you know, we did the control arm show the noise. I would expect in the test drive and make sure the noise is gone. So I figured, okay, cool. Let me go ahead and test drive this real quick. Make sure it's good. I'll call the customer, let them know it's done. We'll all get out of here. I'll get out of here on time. Steve's already out of here. Took the test, took the Nissan for a test drive, still making noise on the passenger side. And it ended up being a backing plate hitting the rotor. You know, it must have hit it, whatever, a little bit of rusty, whatever. So I got it in the shop, go to lift it back on the rack, and out of the four lugs that held that passenger side tire on, Steve had stripped two, three of them. So, you know, he had two lugs hanging off, this and that. You know, and, and that stuff just don't fly with me. I mean, obviously, Steve knew that he stripped those lugs. Right there should have been automatic termination, but I gave the kid a benefit of the doubt, took a picture of it, texted him, said, hey, man, this is bogus. You know, we got to sit down and talk tomorrow when you come in. I don't put up with that. I mean, putting, as a mechanic, you know, you're putting other people's lives in your hand. You know, don't do shabby work like that. All he had, Steve had to say was, hey, man, I need to get out of here on time. I stripped these two lugs. Can you take care of it before you leave today? But no, the kid... Jumped in the car, knowing that he stripped those lugs, backed the car out, parked it, and went to go home. You know, it's you going home and doing whatever you do at home is not more important than someone else's lives in that car. If that tire would have flew off on the highway, no one noticed it. If I wouldn't have tested it, I wouldn't have seen it. You know, that would have fell on me. That would have. You can't do that. You know, and that's a big pet peeve of mine. You know, take quality and take pride in your work. You know, it, whether it's down to a cross threaded lug or you know, you accidentally break something, let the owner know, you know, chances are accidents happen and you got to get it taken care of, especially when it's a safety concern, you know, so that was big on me. I was upset. I left, you know, ended up doing two studs for that car, <coughs> took care of it, called the customer, picked it up, whatever. Steve came in the next day. We sat down and talked. He knew I was upset about it, and I told him, you know, that stuff just don't fly here, this and that. He seemed humble about it. He seemed like, okay, yeah, you know, he, first he tried telling me it was like that, this and that, you know, he never brought it to my attention. I was never on that side and never really checked it. And it was starting to get to the point with Steve where I didn't have to recheck his work so much, but I did notice he was slacking off. He, he didn't check his own work. There's a couple incidents where, you know, we would fix an oil leak or something like that and he would go park it saying it was done and the car would still be leaking oil. You know, and that's big. You got to recheck your work. And that's about taking pride in your work, integrity and in being a mechanic and, you know, putting out the work that people want to see, putting out the work that you get paid for. If you want to raise, you want to grow in this company, you know, your work has, you have to grow with your pay, you have to grow with the industry. So we sat down and talked, had a big deal, you know, he's talking about financial issues, so I gave him a deal on a car, it was a 12 hour job on a Thunderbird, I'm sure you guys maybe seen it here before, or I've talked about it, but we did, uh, tore the whole front of the motor apart, I paid him flat rate for that car. I told him I'd pay him flat rate on that car if he got it done within a certain amount of time, and I'd still pay him for the day, for the week of working on it. The kid, it took him, you know, it took Steve longer than the 12 hours. But I still paid him flat rate, and I still paid him to work on it. And, and mind you guys, it took him all week to do this car. You know, he was on this car for three or four days. So I took care of him, ended up, you know, the kid made a killing that day, and I figured, hey, that's just something I do to help him out. You know, get him out of his financial trouble. I know he's got bills. I know this and that. It helps him out. You know, give him that good attitude to knock out this next one or maybe make it up to me on the next one. What's he do? I mean, he takes my kindness for weakness. You know, he wants to work on the same car knowing he gets paid hourly. As he's waiting on parts, he can't pick up a broom. You know, he doesn't clean up after himself. I have to sit there and clean up after him, this and that. And even when we have time to clean. You know, and that's, I, I can't have that. You know, so, you know, right there alone, I'm upset about the Nissan. I'm set about the work he's putting out. You know, he's coming in with an attitude. He's giving Lauren attitude. You can see it in his face. The kid's not good with customers anymore. He's just slowly falling. Like I said, I don't know if it was something, you know, in, in, in his personal life or something with his girlfriend or relationship-wise. I don't know. Everything at the shop seemed to be running smoothly and as normal as it usually does. So I'm thinking, you know, what the heck. But <coughs> fast forward about a, three days later. So we got the T-Bird done. The kid finally finishes up the BMW, which was another hassle in itself. You know, a seven-hour job took him four days to do. Not that I mind, as long as it's done correctly. You know, I don't mind him taking his time and all that stuff, as long as when he parks it, that car is good. But, you know, the BMW motor. Steve worked on it for four days, you know, breaking things here and there. I had to buy a couple gaskets a couple times because, you know, he... He don't want to put sensors on that I tell him to and do things in a certain order, which he can learn as he goes. He don't need to do anything my way, but, you know, take advice where advice is given. And then he went to go park the car and deliver it, and 
the timing cover's leaking oil. So, and I ended up having to go back after he left to fix that one. So, so we get to that point. Fast forward about a week later, three days later maybe, and uh, about two o'clock hits. I order him, you know, he's sitting for 15 minutes, just parked the BMW, says it's done. We got it running outside, waited about 15 minutes before we realized it had an oil leak. Asked Lauren what we doing for lunch. She went and got lunch, was gone for maybe another 10 minutes, came back, sat and ate lunch for 10, 15 minutes, then a couple cars came in. We, I had some afternoon drop off so we had a, a brake job on a Lexus come in. I had an alternator and a battery on a Mazda that got towed in. So we had two at about 2.30, 3 o'clock. It's quarter to three at this point. And you could see it in Steve's face. You know, he acted like there's not enough time in the day for him to get this stuff done when I already had told him that, listen, man, you can't leave at five o'clock anymore. You're going to be, you know, a nine to six with an hour lunch, whatever. He had no problem with that. So he knows he's here till six. It's 2.45. We got a brake job on the front of a Lexus, which takes 20 minutes, whatever. Even if it takes an hour, there's still enough time in the day. And then an alternator and battery, which called for maybe an hour, hour and a half. So that's more than enough time in the day to get those things done. Parts are available. And... Steve's lunch pretty much done to me. You figure he sat for 15 minutes. Lauren was gone for 15 minutes. So he sat for 15 minutes before lunch. Lauren was gone for 10 minutes or 15 minutes getting lunch. We sat here and ate lunch for 15 minutes. And then when the customers came in to drop out the car, another 10 or so minutes went by. So maybe the kid had three or four minutes left of lunch, whatever it was. But I know an hour or about went by since he pulled that BMW out. We went on lunch. I bought him lunch, came back, ate lunch. It was time to go back to work. Almost quarter to three. So a couple minutes go by, I give Steve the Mazda key, he's out in the shop, I go, hey, pull in this Mazda, I'm going to pull in this Lexus right behind you, knock out this brake job while you do the, you know, battery and alternator, which he should have had more than enough time to get it done, both of them done, and that was about what we had left for the day, so, but I helped Steve out, I don't want to put too much work on him, whatever, I don't want to put him in a bad mood, I don't mind being out there working on cars, and sometimes I just rather do things anyways. The kid proceeds to tell me he's on lunch. So, you know, mind you, an hour goes by already, and Steve tells me I was on it. I laughed it off, thought he was joking around, waited another five minutes, said, hey, you're going to pull in this Mazda because I'm going to pull in the... He, he, he screams at me, he's still on lunch. So I go, Steve, you're not on lunch anymore. Come on, pull this car in. What are you, what are you talking about, dude? You, you, you know, you've been on a car. You've been on the BMW for four days this week. You haven't really done anything else. We got a chance to knock out these two jobs, and you're talking about you're on lunch when I knowing that we have to pull the BMW back in because it's still leaking oil. You want to give me attitude say you're still on lunch. You don't want to pull this car in. So, you know, laziness don't fly with me too. You know, especially right after I, we just had to talk about the Nissan. You know, I just overpaid you for the following week on something I really didn't have to. I did it just to help you out. It wasn't owed to you. It wasn't, you know, it was my choice to do that for you. And he tells me he wants to sit longer. He's still on lunch. Eh, ain't gonna work. So I tell him, dude, pull the fucking car and we gotta get the job done. And he tells me, no, I don't wanna, I'm going home. So he, he, you say I get an hour lunch, you know, like, like he's counting the time. Like I don't know how to tell time and I know when he started lunch and when he ends lunch, all I, all I'm asking for is to pull a car in. If you got five minutes left on lunch, pull the car in, take your, the rest of your five minutes. You know, no, he, he has an issue with that. He doesn't want to work for me. You know, he doesn't want to work. It seems like at this point and he says he's going home. So, okay, dude, you know, you got, you got an issue. You, you say you're still on lunch. You don't want to do the rest of these cars. It's three o'clock in the afternoon. You know, this takes a couple minutes to do these jobs. I go, Steve, if you leave, you're pretty much, you're quitting on me then. You know, you're pretty much done then. And he continued to leave. <clears throat> so getting into it, you know, I, he, I pretty much told him, hey, man, if you leave, you know, you're pretty much done. You know, I can't, I, I got to get these cars done. I need you, you know, I pay you to work here. You know, you work for me, man. And, and he didn't want to hear that. You know, he didn't want to hear that mess. As an employer, you need to know, you know, you come in. You know, granted, the mechanics make the money for the shop. I get it. But everything plays a role. Everybody plays a role in what it takes to run a shop and what, you know, just because the mechanics makes the most of the money, it's fine. But you got to be willing to work. You got to be willing to come in. You know, I sign this kid's checks. You know, he needs to be willing to work for it. You know, it, I'm, not, I'm not paying him to sit around. I'm not paying anybody to sit around and take advantage of me and, you know, ask questions like, he's knocking on a brake job. We got another car waiting to come in. And him asking Lauren, why ain't I pulling this car in and working on it? Uh, probably because I'm the owner and you work for me and when you finish that car I need to have work for you for the rest of the day so you can do the next car you know Steve would expect me to do his job for him which is fine I don't mind being out there I'm a mechanic too but 
you know, what I plan out for my employers that my employees that work here is what I plan out for them. Whether I want to do a job or I want, I've never thrown Steve something he I don't think he could handle. I've never asked him to, you know, come out of his comfort level. I've always asked him, hey, can you handle this? Will you be able to do this? If not, I'll take care of it. Or you do this section of the car and then I'll time it when you're done. Then you can put it back together. You know, I've never asked him to do more than what I paid him for, more than what he's worth, or more than I would, you know, know that he could take care of. But the kid just, he didn't want to work anymore. So, so he continues to leave. He leaves, he texts me later on in the night, he goes, you know, you know, I like working there and all, and all that stuff, but, you know, it was kind of bogus how you said I didn't make any money for you. Mind you guys, I never said anything to the kid until after he said he didn't want to pull in a car when he was done, when I knew he was done with his lunch. You know, then I mentioned, yo, man, we didn't make, you know, you haven't made any money this week. Let's pull in this car and redeem it. We still got the rest of the week to go. That's kind of where I was hitting at. You know, but he tells me in the text that, you know, he don't want to be told what to do and this and that. I go, well, dude, good luck to you. You know, let me know. You come get your box. Let me know. Good luck to you. Have fun. And I wish you the best of luck. You know, it is what it is. You know, and I'm not going to gripe on his feelings and everything else because at the end of the day, you know, I'm the boss. The kid needs to understand. I'm the boss. He come here, work for me. I, I signed his checks. And, you know, I don't usually get worked up over things like that. But, you know, the kid was taking advantage of me. And that's just how I feel about it. You know, you come in. We have an agreement. You know, the kid comes in on time for a week straight and he thinks he deserves a raise. No, you know, the agreement was you come in. You work from this time to this time. This is how much I pay you. You know, I have incentive. I have bonuses. I laid it all on the line for him. And... You know, it, we bonus. We, we didn't even bonus one month, and I still threw him something. Something is better than nothing. I don't care if I threw him an extra five dollars, ten dollars, hundred dollars, twenty dollars. It doesn't matter. Uh, you know, we. I still took care of him, even though we didn't even bonus. So, I did my part. All I wanted him to do was his part. Knock out these cars. And long story short, on those, he ended up leaving. I pulled into two cars. I ended up getting both those jobs done and finding out what's going on with his BMW within like an hour and a half. So knocked out a passing two on a Lexus, knocked out an alternator battery, and pulled in the BMW, the Roadster, back in to find out where the oil leak's coming from and all that stuff. Set that up for them the following morning. Finally, and I had to retake all his work, all the work that I paid him for. I built out a seven-hour job, guys, and I had to pay Steve 15, 16 hours for that car. You know, probably more than that, but, you know, and then, and then chances that I had to rebuy gaskets, I had to rebuy coolant, I had to rebuy oil because I had to take that thing apart twice. He, Steve took it apart once because he forgot to put knock sensors in so he had to re-pull the intake off and then I had to take it apart again to pull the timing cover off and put glue where he forgot to put glue. You know, so it's just things like that. You know, I don't expect always to make money. I know an employee is going to make mistakes. I got it. The kids made plenty of mistakes before all this, but it just started getting to the point where, you know, he started making those mistakes that, you know, he wasn't sorry for, he didn't care about, you know, he, yeah, I purposely made the mistake, it seemed like, you know, it, it, when it starts to become like he's trying to sabotage me, you know, the kid was on his way out anyways. I'm sure, I'm sure Lauren would have been able to put up with another week or two of it before she ended up firing him anyways, but it's good, you know, I, I wish him the best, I hope him, you know, I hope you guys don't miss him, but, you know, mechanics like that in this industry don't last long at places, you know, they probably work at a place, you know, five or six months before the owners start to catch on, they start to see their true colors, and he bounces off to the next stop. But guys, you guys want to last in this industry, and you guys want to move up the ranks and, you know, end up being a shop owner or end up making the big bucks. You got to put quality in your work. You got to, you know, you got to be humble about your mistakes. You got to, you know, try to come in with an open mind every day learning, every day trying to make yourself better, you know. Things like those lug nuts, I would never let that happen in my career. And, you know, I would, yes, everybody stripped lugs before, but I would never let them go. You know, that's something that bothers me. I wouldn't, if I did something like that, I wouldn't be able to sleep that night. I would be tossing and turning. You know, we've all stripped lug nuts. Make it right. You know, you all make mistakes, but after your mistakes, find them, let someone know, you know, get it done. When you're finished with it, get it done the right way because the customer's paying to get their job done correctly, not things be broken and everything else. The car ends up being worse than it was when they first, we first started working on it. You know, so mechanics, we make mistakes, we, you know, we do, but, you know, we stand behind our mistakes. You take care of them. It's only a mistake is all it is. It's only a mistake. It can be fixed. Everything can be fixed. And Steve didn't care, you know, and, and safety is a big issue in this shop. You know, I've actually gotten into almost fist fights with other technicians working at other shops with hackery like that. You know, I don't put up with it. And as a business owner, it was even worse for me. You know, when I, if I cared that, if I was that passionate enough when I was just an employee working for somebody and seeing other me mechanics do that or other techs do stuff like that, I got passionate about it. Now as a business owner to see it, 
it, you know, it made me heated. I was really upset about the Nissan. I was really upset about the BMW. I was really upset about the T-Bird, and this stuff was just stacking, stacking. And st Steve still came in trying to take advantage of us, sitting in his chair, sitting on his phone, taking his 10-minute bathroom breaks, drinking all the drinks in the, you know, in the refrigerator, not replacing them. You know, the stuff adds up. You know, I don't have to feed and, and, and drink this, and supply this kid with his drinks for the day. You know, he's an adult. He could bring his own drinks in, or he could replace the ones that he drinks of mine. No, it got to a point where it was expected. If there wasn't my drinks in that fridge for Steve to drink, he was upset with me for some reason. Like, he couldn't bring in his own drinks or bring in his own lunch or go get his own lunch. You know, and that's just, it didn't fly anymore. I knew the kid wasn't going to last a month before he walked out. So, but I wanted to fill you guys in live. We've been late on the videos. Had to let this slash, you know, business side slash ranch slash what happened with Steve. But we got a new guy in here. You guys will probably meet him soon in the next couple of videos. An old friend of mine. He's actually worked here before. This guy's like my right hand man. You know, and luckily it just was a situation. He was transitioning jobs. You know, we had to negotiate his, his, his pay and all that stuff. But we finally, you know, we made an agreement we came to we came to an agreement so he's back in here kicking butt in the shop you guys will meet him real soon but gotta wrap this one up gotta get to it you guys let me know down in the comments take pride in your work you know let me know what you guys think of what steve did you know am i in the wrong you know let me know down in the comments so as always guys like comment subscribe catch you in the next one signing out